My lords and ladies, your attention please. This morning we have the Princess's Sleeve Tournament. There are 32 entrants for this tournament. We have a lot of people here today fighting for the honor of Her Highness. What we will be doing is having four pools of people. With the size of the list field that we have, we will be running two sets. Pardon me, we will have one set of people in that field and this field, and then we will switch them out. Thank you very much. Right then. Um, Her Majesty has. Uh... I heard a lot about this whole Christmas bride thing that's going on during your reign. Right, right. I actually brought a question with me. Uh, oh. You know what? I, you know what we have, uh, Don, Master Simon, uh, Don, Master Kevin. We have uh, Her Majesty has a question about uh, something from the Princess Bride, and uh, I, I assume that since we're on the right rear field, uh, we, Her Majesty, we have. Everything. Okay. I can quote it. Okay. We have. Um, Don Master Simon, Don Master Kevin, Master Danner, uh, Don Master Simon. We have, we have, uh, some excellent knowledge here, so if you care to ask your question. Well, my question is, does Tubbo really cancel out Capofaro? <laughs> well, Your Majesty. <laughs> Mr. Walt was actually a pretender to the style of Distreza, and I cannot in good conscience say that Tubal's style would cancel out Capofero. Instead, I would say that the person who is most skilled with their individual style would be the victor in the battle. In Tubal's style, they tend to stand a little bit more upright, they tend to have the arms straight extended, but they prefer to engage with the blade much nearer the hilt than in the style of Rigolfo Capofero. He prefers to stand with the weight pulled further back, the arm fully extended, and engage someone a little bit further out. So if you're looking for safety in space, I'd recommend you go for a couple of that one instead. I think it's because his opponent has studied his grip on That's what I was going to ask. It's just the aircraft for actually helped. Um, uh, uh, we recently have a translation by Ken Monshine. It's the first time that a grip has been translated into English since it was originally published back in the 1500s. Um, well, I have not made a thorough study of it myself at this point, um, one of my instructors has read through the manuscript and says, well, you know, it's, it's interesting that it's being looked at as such an example when really it's an architect and a mathematician who's tried to apply these things to fencing. And if you try to do what's really shining here, you're probably going to end up dead. <laughs> Somewhat related question. What, yes. Why would an ego use Capitaro to attack a hill? Uh, <laughs> wow, you guys are smart. <laughs> <laughs> We've been studying the movie. <laughs> 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 it's already yeah. had. Um, Somebody's going to have to check that for me. Oh, sure. Please. Why would an ego use Capitaro to attack a hill? Ah, a hill. In this case, I would actually think that using Chibot's style, standing upright would give you a greater measure. However, perhaps he was wanting to stand with the weight further back on the back leg, giving himself a, a more grounded base. That's my thought just off the top of my head. Yeah, well, the other thing is, I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah, his style, I assume he's a world leader in this society as well? Um, well, no, uh, I, he, he is not, Good world, I'm sorry. I wonder why that is. I, that is so far outside my realm of knowledge, I'm not going to answer that, to be honest with you. Um, uh, but perhaps, uh, Mizey, could you tell us why he's not a Laurel yet? Oh, I understand. I understand that song. I've heard it before. There's another verse to it. Before we go on, I think we need to take this out of the informal and into the formal. Here reopens the court of North Shale. <laughs> 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 
If it is a right and proper thing, and within the power of your crown, and is witnessed by their majesty's mid-realm, then it shall be yours. Call forth their order. Their majesties call forth their loyal order of the laurel. <laughs> You're happy you knew all those answers, aren't you? <laughs> Did you he didn't the actually get a chance. Sneaking up on the rapier list. <laughs> yeah, Bad Marshal. I got this sword here, you know. I took it out on the rapier. Look a little out of place. <laughs> That's all right. You can use this as a parrying device here. I heard you can't hit anybody with it. Ah. Uh, provided you use the heavy sword. Huh? Provided you use this. Oh yeah. Oh yes. <laughs> You can use the heavy sword on the field as long as you use your helm as is. Oh, better. Good masters, good mistresses of the laurel, mindful of Don Toshikagi's talents and abilities, you find him worthy to be numbered among your most noble order. Aye! Hell yes. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> I will relieve you of your duties as master of these lists today. Will you take those duties for him? It would be my honor. In that regard, we charge you, sir. Stand your vigil until an event of your choosing. And then present yourself to your crown or will you offer you elevation into this noble order. Good masters, good mistresses, we thank you for your abundant counsel on this wonderful man. We would ask that you take him now to a vigil that should be popping up somewhere nearby. <laughs> oh, right. So we give you a good view while you're sitting here today. Does that work out for you? Indeed it will. If you would spirit him off to his vigil, we would be in your debt. <laughs> <laughs>